This is one of my favorite slides and I really like to start with the number 42. Not only because it's the answer to life, the universe and everything else, it's also a good estimate of the number of new chemicals that we are discovering. It's the number of new chemicals that human society is discovering each and every hour. Which basically means that when we are done with that seminar, we know something about 40 new chemicals. Some of them you will never encounter because they are just for scientific research, but some of them might be the new blockbuster chemicals. So chemical discovery, chemical use is a hugely dynamic system and we're all struggling to keep up with that. And just to take a look at where we are standing today, we know about, or we can basically think about an almost infinite number of chemicals. In our catalogue, we have around 100 million chemicals that we sort of know something about, that we have been synthesizing. Is that better? Okay. That we have been synthesizing uh, and that we have been cataloging. When we are looking at how many chemicals we are using in consumer products, in chemical products, etc., we are talking about roughly 100,000 chemicals. And when we're going out into the environment and we're taking samples and we're looking at what we're finding there, we are talking about roughly 10,000 chemicals that we are finding in our bodies, in a river, in a fish, in other organisms there. And just to contrast that, you might see that small little dot down here. That is the number of chemicals that we're actually monitoring in the environment. That's the number of chemicals where we're keeping a tap on, where we're trying to understand how much is there and how much of a problem they make. Contrast, 45 chemicals that we're monitoring with tens of thousands of chemicals that we're using. That's a real problem. The other problem is really what do we actually know about chemical safety? And the thing is that Germany has been looking at what do we know and how good are the safety assessments that uh, industry and authorities are doing. They have been looking at around 1,800 chemicals. And they concluded that from 1,800 chemicals that have been evaluated for safety, the information is complete and sufficient for one chemical. So one out of 1,800 that have been evaluated, we really have a complete and reliable data set at hand. So I think there is some room for improvement there. We really need to basically um, step up our game there. On the other hand, uh, if we are looking back a couple of years, uh, we see that we really have improved the situation. Uh, we really are better in handling chemicals. We're using less toxic and less risky chemicals uh, compared to, say, 50 years ago or something like that. What we're seeing is that at that time, so in, in earlier days, so to speak, we had incidents, incidents and situations where people were exposed at their workplace uh, or via food to really toxic amounts of chemicals and they were dying. You could see that. You could see fish dying, you could see birds dying. So we had, and this is just for human health, it works the same way for the environment, we had a low number of people severely affected. And that's easy to see and that's easy to do something about that. You you can actually take measures. What we're having when we're now approaching modern days is that we're exposing more and more people to more and more chemicals at low concentrations. So what we have is a blanket of pollution, a blanket of chemicals everywhere, which makes it really, really hard to actually get a grip on that, to see, okay, somebody is getting cancer, somebody is uh, getting sick. What is causing that? It's almost impossible to say, oh, it's that chemical or it's that chemical, which makes it really hard to improve the situation, to think about who is responsible for that and what can you actually do about that. Uh, Philippe Grandjean called that the silent pandemic of chemical pollution that we're having, and that's the challenge that we're facing. It's by far not the only challenge that humanity is facing, and uh, the sustainable development goals are basically uh, measures or ideas or collections of thoughts on how to move uh, society forward towards a sustainable development. The interesting thing is that chemicals are not mentioned directly in any of those goals. They are mentioned in the underlying targets. Uh, a lot of them are directly connected to sustainable chemical use and sustainable chemical development, but they are not specifically mentioned here. And the interesting thing is that chemicals are playing a critical role for almost all of those sustainable development goals. But they have a dual role. They are a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they are helping us to achieve those goals. 
When we're thinking about, for example, zero hunger is definitely connected to, say, artificial fertilizers or to pesticide use or something like that. On the other hand, they are a real risk if we're thinking, of, for example, life below water and life on land, where we are toxifying and poisoning our environment at the same time. So there is no clear, simple answer, except those that are completely wrong. But otherwise, we really have to face the fact that we are looking at a double-edged sword there. If we're looking at zero hunger, life below water, life on land, uh, it's interesting to also take a quick look at how the situation is in the Swedish environment. This is the evaluation that has been done by the Swedish Chemicals Inspectorate in 2019 that has been published just a couple of months ago, looking at the, the uh, health impact or the potential health impact, the risks for humans and for the environment over the years. And what we're seeing is that we are spraying and using more herbicides or more pesticides in general than before. So we have an increasing trend here over time. At the same time, we have a constant risk to humans and the environment. So for me, the critical question really here is that sort of stagnant level that we have here, are we okay with that? Or do we want to improve things? So that's the discussion that we have to take. What are acceptable levels of risks that we are willing to tolerate? And we need to have an honest debate about that because, again, the pesticides are also having a very beneficial function. So it's the question on how to optimize that. So basically, that means um, I would like to finish that very brief introduction to the seminar with uh, that little coin, the old Roman god of Janus with the two faces, which for me really characterizes the problem and the challenges that we're having with chemicals and their effects on human health and the environment. It's integrated into many of the other 17, I thought. But maybe that's naive and say they won't push things to uh, as far as it, as it could should it be a standalone one. But that was my first spontaneous reaction. But I think that's that's my my main concern. My, my main concern, I think, is it's too hidden. It's below the surface. It's it's critical in basically all of that, whether it's job creation and, and fruit uh, production on the positive side, environmental pollution, health effects on humans on the negative side, but uh, it doesn't get enough attention, there is not enough political debate. And we have been, uh, you, you have been arguing that uh, one of your problems is the, the international perspective, that you're a globally, uh, a global company, and of course a lot of companies, a lot of the big players are global companies, but we have basically no international governance system for chemicals. We have the Rotterdam Convention or we have the Montreal Protocol and th those things that cover only a very, very minute proportion of what's actually going on in chemical trade and international chemical business. So I think uh, having a sustainable development goals um, that specifically, whether you call that the non-toxic environment or whether you call it sustainable chemistry or whatever you might call that, uh, would just it's just a communication vehicle to drive things forward. And that's, I think, uh, what the, that it's missing is one of the reasons why the debate is lagging behind with everything else. And I, I agree with Thomas there. We use these goals a lot in communication with different actors in society, both within Sweden but internationally as well. And the fact that we don't have one where we can say, I'm working with this goal, makes communication more difficult. It makes this problem a bit invisible. The chemicals themselves are invisible. People can't pronounce the names of them. They don't know what they are or what they do. And the fact that we don't really have a simple tool to communicate this issue makes it more difficult. And there are companies around the world that are working with the Sustainable Development Goals, and they say, my company's working with Goal 2 and 14, and they can put the pictures up there. But even if they are working with chemicals, they can't say, well, it's kind of in, in 11 and 12 and, and 16 somewhere in there, and you can't really see it. But So I, th I think it would be a very strong communication tool, and it would really help drive innovation and drive discussions and maybe even drive global agreements, which are being discussed in a lot of different places and a lot of different levels. But obviously, evidently, we really maybe, need this. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do agree, and I also emphasize the sort of pedagogical problem with discussing chemicals in the same way as with climate. I mean, personally, I believe uh, that this, you called it something, mattress of chemicals or this background level of all kinds Blanket of cocktails. Of Blanket. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, it's, come on. No, it's, it's a huge problem. <laughs> you want to scare people, say that we're under a blanket of chemicals everywhere. 
If I take a blood sample, I'm going to find around 150 to uh, 200 chemicals in that blood. And I'm not, I'm definitely not saying... What's a chemical then? Because, you know, a, a chemical, we're not talking about oxygen or water okay. or something like that. We're talking Fair about, uh, uh, we're talking about synthesized hazardous chemicals. And uh, I think I'm not, I'm not trying to... In, in one way, I'm trying to scare people, but in, in the sense of making them aware that there is a potential problem. I'm not saying that this is particularly problematic. What I'm saying is that we actually have to take a look. The chemicals are there, and we can't just ignore that they are there. We have to okay. agree which amounts of chemicals, which levels we find acceptable. And that's the challenge to actually do that. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the critical thing. I'm not. We will never, uh, in, in our society, have a human being that doesn't contain man-made chemicals in their blood or urine or other tissues, uh, which can be okay, but can also be really problematic. And it's somewhere in between that we are, and we just need to take a closer look and discuss that honestly. Mm. Mattress of chemicals. Yeah. Blanket of chemical Blanket. pollution. Blanket of chemicals. And then what you just said now kind of circles back around to what we were saying in the beginning about the cost of chemicals and the cost of producing cheaper products that are attractive on the market versus the costs that are incurred in human health and healthcare systems or in environmental damage or loss of species. So these are costs that are not accounted for in the, in the products that we're buying. And this is problematic in how we're dealing with these issues. Coming back to the sustainability goals, I think it's actually mentioned in... In the in the comments for four or five only of the uh, of the of development goals, and then it goes to the waste, it goes to sustainable industry chemicals there, and it goes to drinking water. That's mainly the things, and life below water also mentions pollutants. So this this mention here and there, but it sh I think what I hear is that we need to talk about it. And I think one thing that we see when we meet students is that oh, we want to work with climate change because they hear about that, but they don't hear about the chemicals. So there's not that many interested in working with, with chemicals and pollution because is that an issue still? But don't we know about TBT and DDT and those? So mm. thank you. <laughs>